on my way into town. I gotta go pay my cable bill and go see a lawyer about the sale of my multicam. And I noticed these guys building a bamboo structure. So let's go see what they're up to and just look at what they're doing. It's got bamboo support poles and they've got it's called Nipa Palm Roof. And you take those and fold them. They cut the palm leaves and they fold them. Right here. I can see. I can see. Like that. Let's go ask them what they're doing. Come on, stop. I go see Jeff. What you building? What's up? Restaurant. Restaurant. Okay, so they're building a restaurant. Filipina food? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Are you the restaurant owner? Yes. You you the owner? What's your name? Titing. Titing? Sinisau. Sinisau? Titing? Titing. Titing. And uh, when do you when will your restaurant be open? You think? Kanusa. Kanusa open. June 18th. June 18th. Okay. All right. So we wanted to show people. I have a YouTube video, a vlogger. So I'll show them how the construction is done here. So it's going to be a restaurant. They're just using some uh, some ties to tie this together. No nails. This is native construction. Looks pretty good, actually. Should be okay. So we'll come back June 18th when they open. Get some food. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. Walking past the Petron. Petron gas station. Well, they, they pump your gas here in the Philippines. So here's the prices per liter. I want you to uh, do the conversion. But it's about four dollars a gallon here in the Philippines. So all of you YouTube scrappers out there in America, and you're up forever. This is how it's done in the Philippines. This guy's on a tricycle bike. He's pedaling. He goes around the neighborhoods. Picks up stuff. Okay, so I got my cable bill paid. DCTV, Digital Cable Television, in the Philippines. It's pretty good. So now I'm on my way to see a lawyer. We have a little Suzuki Scrum Multicab truck four-wheel drive. And here's a picture. And we're trying to sell it. I've got a guy coming from Samar. It's about a four-hour bus ride that's coming to buy the truck. So I'm pretty sure he's pretty serious about buying. So I'm going to go see a lawyer about the paperwork I need to do to sell the truck. You'll need a deed of sale, at least, I think. And I'm not sure how that's done. My wife doesn't know. So we'll go see um, our lawyer, Lawyer Apelos. He's in. If not, we'll go find somewhere else. That's where I'm headed. I'm here. You can see all the pretty girls in their school uniforms. I am close to Western Lake Day College, which is that tall white building there. And they're adding on and growing. It's a good college. My niece goes there for nursing school. She's in her last, she will be next year in her last year of nursing school. She'll probably work a few years here in the Philippines to get some experience. And then she'll be eligible to go somewhere else in the world and work. And that's what most of the nurses do. They go somewhere else because nursing doesn't pay much here. They make about five, six hundred dollars a month. And that's it. And, uh, well, that's a good salary here in the Philippines. It's still not, not very much. Especially for the training you have to receive and the work that you do. Anyhow, enough about that. I'm on my way. Mm, barbecue. Barbecue on a stick. It's like chicken intestines and what's this? Pork? And pork? Like pila each stick. How much per stick? Yeah. This one stick, 10 pesos. 10 pesos? Yes. How much for the pork? Pork, 50 pesos. 50 pesos for a piece yeah. of pork. Okay. 
So 20 cents for a stick of chicken intestines and about a dollar for a piece of corn. Not bad. We'll come back. Hey, Mali. Too early to eat right now. Uh, all right, so we got a beggar here on this trip. So we're going to stop and help him. I used to not give to the bankers. Yeah, look at that guy. He probably needs the money. Your son treats the kids to come out here today. And although I mean I like it, uh, I am a Christian and I do read the Bible. And I found a passage and I'll share it here with you. It says to give to the people who beg for you. Give to the beggars. It doesn't say give to the beggars if you think that they're going to use it for something good. It doesn't give any qualifications. It just says give to the beggars and people who ask to borrow money. And that's hard to do sometimes. We have to let our pride go. Especially, I know some of these people have the kids out here on the street. They're peddling. You see them in dirty clothes and they're dirty and they have sad little faces. And you know Filipino lets their kid run around like that. So you know, here's one. He's selling. Here comes one. He's selling. Uh, selling towels. I don't know how much. Digging through the garbage. Hello, Takpila. How much? One hundred. How about ten pesos? Ten. One hundred. Nah, ten pesos. Hold on. So he wanted a hundred pesos for a few towels, which are probably about forty pesos at the store. And but he saw a white guy, so he's going to charge more. But somebody else will get him cheaper. And he's he's hustling. So I give him ten pesos, and he could keep his towels. All right. So I'm close to the office here. We'll talk to you about that. Tomorrow. my lawyer. A uh, quick talk. Uh, to sell the truck, I need to bring the buyer to his office with my wife. The truck is in her name. And then they will make the deed of sales. They both have to be present for that transaction. It's going to cost about 1,500 pesos. $30. So, and I asked him if he'd be willing to be interviewed about things that might interest expats. He said, oh, I'm not an expert in the field. He said, go see Lawyer Kapahi. So uh, I'm going to see if I can work that out. And we'll have an interview with a lawyer who knows uh, what expats need to know about the law here in the Philippines. So I visited my mother-in-law. I'm headed home now. And just to show you that uh, people here in the Philippines have a good sense of humor. Here it is. There we go. One peso coin. It's in the concrete. So if somebody tries to pick it up. I saw it one day and I tried it. Okay, let's see if we can get a tricycle. So if you think you don't need to know any Messiah when you come here, think again. It helps to get around. The walls of San Antonio, close to San Antonio College, is what I'm telling you. He's loaded, I'm not going to talk to him. Mejia! Mejia, Duel Sosanto Nino! Mejia, Duel Sosanto Nino! Sometimes it's hard to get a tricycle to go where I want to go because I don't know why they don't want to go there. He's worried. I don't know why he stopped and asked him to pick that foreign guy if he wants to cream in there. Not a good, not a good idea. This is an intersection where it's a good place to pick up. I'm right here across from my yards. Served well, much more. Mahia, Dulce Santo Nino. Mahia, Dulce Santo Nino. Yes. 
Men här, du också samt och ninja kallis. Yes, du går in där. Nästa video. Ah, du också samt och ninja kallis. Men här.
Auburn Street, and I'm heading to my house. So, we got a guy on his way from the island of Samar. There's a bridge between the island of Samar and Leyte. So, he's taking a bus, it's a 15 passenger van from Samar to uh, Tacloban. Hello, Roberto! Hey, how are you? Okay, may I come in? Yeah. Okay. I'll just let you say hello, no interview, just say hello to my to my viewers. Uh oh. Thank you to my neighbor Roberto. Roberto just moved back to the Philippines two years ago from San Francisco. And he was a welder there for 40, 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. So he worked hard. Now he's back here and relaxing, enjoying his life in the Philippines. And he's a good neighbor. He's not he's got some chickens? You got roosters? Yeah, I have a little bit. Sunoi? I got, uh, for the for the uh, fighting? For fighting. Fighting uh, fighting roosters. So uh, and he's eating his lunch. We're gonna leave him alone. I just wanted to introduce you to Roberto and uh, he sits out on his porch here a lot and I wave when I go by. So we'll just talk to you later. All right. Bye bye. Now I'm at home. And it sounds like I've got somebody waiting for me in there. Hi buddy. Mama, Mama! No, Daddy comes in the door, not Mama. Daddy, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy. Daddy, 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 Daddy. You call Lola? Call Lola, talk to Lola. Call Lola on the phone. Yeah, hello Lola. JJ here. Lola, Lola. Ready for a nap? You waiting for daddy? There's his aunt, Erlinda. All right, so today we did the deal. We sold our Suzuki Scrum multi cab. Uh, we bought that in 2020 when I was living in America. Maricel just needed it really bad. And for her store and she never used it for the store. She had a little sorry sorry store when I first met her. We were in a long distance relationship and uh, that was kind of the only thing I felt foolish about spending money on for her. But as it turned out it was good because when we came here I had a vehicle and they used it a lot for the family. So that wasn't, I didn't feel too bad about it. But looking back I, I might not have done it. <clears throat> Anyhow, we've sold it. And that's one more step uh, I need to take to get ready to go to America. Um, June 24th, I'll be leaving Philippines to go to America. I'm going to work for six months, come back. And so we'll save that money from selling the multicab to help us on our journey to America. Or maybe it'll be used to pay for my trip to America to work. It, either way it works out, it, it helps us with our pocketbook. Because it's going to cost us money to go to America. Anyhow, I had to come out here outside in the street and make this little segment of the video because it's loud in the house. Maricel is on the phone. When she's on the phone, she has to talk loud. When she talks to me in the house, she talks in a whisper and she gets mad when I don't understand her. Okay, I'm joking. It does, it is that way sometimes. One thing about selling the multi kit the guy came from the island of Samoa. He sent his wife and his nephew and another guy. I'm not sure of the relationship. So they came on a bus, on a van, stopped at the Robertson's Mall, I went to pick them up. This morning, I went out to make a video of the, of the truck to show the guy in Samar that it's a good truck. Well, went out there and hit the gas pedal to crank it up, and the gas pedal went to the floor. Oh no! The throttle cable broke. So I had to run and buy a throttle cable and install it. The new one I bought, there's a little clip that holds the cable on to the, to the gas pedal fitting. It's a little spring clip. And the new one didn't work right. So I put it on and it came off again. Oh, no. Only in the Philippines. So I took the old clip off of the old throttle cable and put it on the new throttle cable and it worked. So. That was one last thing from that multicab. Multicab was always something breaking with it. And uh, 
maybe a little thing. Sometimes a big thing. We didn't have to have a head gasket put on it one time. It was overheating. But uh, on the very last day, one more repair, and I had to hustle to get it done. And, you know, try to be calm and make sure what I'm doing and relax and think and not screw it up. So one more thing. So we're gonna celebrate tonight with some Shakey's Pizza, the sale of the, of the multi kit. And that gives us a little more space here in the garage for JJ to play, uh, for us to come in and out. And we're left with our, I'll show you in the background, I won't switch the camera, our Toyota Wego, that's our only car now. And that's all we need.